All right, Joe 200, how are you guys? All right, so this is uh, Sunday and it is uh, January 8th, 2023. And so this is the drill. And uh, I, I sent out the how to get an A uh, um, uh, YouTube link, which is gonna be your video channel. And so you can find all the different lectures that I produce um, uh, all listed in that, that, that same YouTube channel. And uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go uh, quickly over what I, I did in the first video. And that is if you need access to any information, any help. OK, so we have uh, again, we have these how to folders. OK, so this is really, really cool stuff. OK, and you see it right there. All right. So it's how to do whatever it is in Gerontology 200. OK, so in here. Um, it talks about how to get an A, all right? And so this is everything you need to know, okay? This is the video that I did, so I want you to watch it. Um, how to do your turn in assignments. So you're gonna have um, three significant papers. You know, once, you know, the, the first two are were called critical thinking assignments, okay? And we can see them right here. And then the, the last one is the final interview paper. The critical thinking assignments are about two to three pages of text. And then you have associated figures from the data mining and data analysis you're gonna do, okay? All right, so just be aware of plagiarism because it's one thing that we really cannot stand and we 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 will go after you if you do that, okay? All right, um, this, how, do you do, how you do your discussion board post, if you, if you go in and you look at the syllabus, and I said this in the original video, to get full credit on your um, discussion board, um, you do one primary post uh, in response to uh, the prompt that we've put out there, and then you do three additional commentaries on your classmates' posts, okay? All right, um, you're gonna do that every week, okay? Uh, and then um, you know, and then you have weekly quizzes, and you can see how you've done in your quiz by going to your gradebook and, and uh, clicking on the number right there, okay? All right, so that, that's basically what you need to know right there. I'm not going to go through all these. You should download the syllabus, okay? Um, and what we're going to basically do is go into every single week, okay? So, and we'll go right into the weekly assignments. Um, this is just a preamble about the fact um, that uh, the readings are no cost to you, okay? Um, it kind of goes through what what is expected of you, and um, and then um, and then each weekly assignment right here, okay? So uh, we'll go right into week assignment, weekly assignment number one, okay? So I, I have gone ahead and I put the video right here of how to get an A, okay? And then we actually have the structure of the course, okay? So this is the, the information, um, the assignment, okay? The material that you should, you should learn. Um, it starts with a, just an amazing video um, that uh, was produced by uh, The Economist in 2021, okay? So I want you to just kind of take a you know, kickback and listen to it, okay? Um, and then it really primes you for the reading, okay? That is secondary right here. Now this, this we've been waiting for a long time for the National Institute on Aging to come up with a, a kind of revised, more modern version. Uh, this, this particular publication was done in 2007. What's really, really good about it is this complete global overview of all of the issues that, that um, not only we have to deal with as individuals dealing with aging, um, our communities, our country, but also, you know, it's the, the global, global economy. So they really get into kind of economics, but related to healthcare and uh, we relate it to financial planning. So it's a real great overview. And then what we do is, is we'll go in to each of the trends or topics that are raised um, throughout this um, uh, overview article in greater detail throughout the entire semester as we go through week two and three and four and five and things like that, okay? Awesome. Now, again, the suggestion that I have is, is if I were you guys, I would just go ahead and I would open up my Blackboard page a second time and I would go in here, okay, and um, what I'm gonna, I have it on student view right there, which is just as fine, okay, and then you're gonna go into um, the weekly assignment, okay. The only difference is, okay, when we get into week one, you'll have, um, you know, one uh, part of the assignment open so you can look at the readings, you know, and, um, and then the second part of the assignment, you're just gonna go right in over here and you're gonna do your quiz. So you can hit right there, you hit quiz, okay, you hit begin, 
and you see that you got five multiple choice questions, okay? And it's based on, on a combination of the video and the reading, okay? All righty. So, um, you're, you know, welcome to work on this together with friends. That, that's fine. It's, you know, collaborative learning. It's just, we just want you to learn it, okay? All right. Um, there are, you know, five questions, as we see here, but they're drawn from a pool of 30 to 40 questions. So it's unlikely that everybody's going to get the same set of questions, okay? So I would just, you know, look at the, I would just do a really quickly overview of this, okay? Today's global population over the age of 65 accounts for, you know, what population, what percentage of the population, okay? And boom, 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 boom. And if you see something that you like, let's say you think it is 8% of the population, then you hit save answer, Okay. All right, just so you have it dialed in, all right? Um, and uh, population decline in less developed countries, okay? So we have countries like United States, okay, very developed. And then you have uh, countries like Guatemala, okay, that are not developed, okay? So these are, um, the, we, we call them developed, undeveloped. We call them um, uh, westernized countries, okay? Um, and uh, there's a lot of different uh, ways of describing these countries, okay? All right, so, um, and population declines in less focus are primarily due to what, okay? So is it increased mortality, okay? Um, increased migration, low fertility, all of the above, okay? All right, so, um, so that's, that's, that, that's how you'd go about that, okay? So let's go right into um, the assignment here, okay? So I want you to watch, as I indicated, this video. It's a really incredible video. And I, I just I took a, a, a few notes, you know, as I was looking at it. And um, the, the, uh, the economist, the, the, the special um, author, um, editor in charge of this, her name was uh, Sasha Nada. And she really captures, you know, some of the, some of the real gripping issues. And this is, it's a big financial thing. Uh, we you know, we, we just saw things play out in terms of Congress, okay? Uh, we're going to deal with the Senate. We're going to deal with the, the executive branch of, of some of the more pressing issues. And a big part of the pressing issues is, is financial and economics, okay? And, um, you know, we all want to live forever. We want to have really vital lives, okay? But the reality is there's, there's that period, end of life period, where um, older people become an economic drain, Okay, um, on your individual family, on you as an individual, you you can run out of money really quickly. Okay, and then community-based economic drain. Look, my dog just showed up. This is Desi. Okay, how you doing, bud? Here, let's see if Desi can say hi. There he goes. Okay, um, yeah, Desi's just doing a drive-by. He's a good boy. We just got him. He's a rescue, as you as you know. <laughs> and um, um, and. The, the problem is um, it's the, the economics of this situation is is not sustainable, okay? So we hear a lot about sustainability um, at USC. That has to do with, like, um, you know, um, power sustainability through uh, improving the electric grid by having solar panels, or we have um, sustainability by using, um, uh, uh, you know, special trash bins that we can recycle, um, uh, a lot of the, the paper products and the plastics, that's a different type. Economic sustainability is, is um, you know, the costs, okay? So the, the, the money coming in and then the money going out, and it's not sustainable. So the money coming in from taxes is not, um, not enough to sustain the cost of care for older people. And so we're, we're definitely hitting a breaking point, and we're going to talk about this all semester long, okay? So it's a, it's a big deal, okay? Um, the other thing that happens is we're going to see that there, we, we have this growing, growing percentage of the population. Okay, so they talk about it here um, uh, when they when they when they talk about the projection in this video to 2050, where uh, uh, you know a fourth of the population is going to be over age 65. We're going to go in here. We look at these trends in 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 that in that article, and this is a really good summary right here, and it shows you again. Um, uh, uh, population growth, okay, okay, in terms of billions of people right here, okay, but then we, we hone it down in terms of the percentages of the different age groups, and what you see, um, and this is the entire world here, we're going from green to green to green, okay, so this is the 20 to 64, okay, um, so, you know, that's, you know, a, kind of a sustainable population right here, 
all right? Um, but the, the big growth is, is in the gold right here, okay? So we see 5% to 7% to 16%, okay? Now, um, if there's been a growth in this one area and this kind of working age is, is, is about the same, you see a decline in fertility and you see a decline in youth. But this big growth right here, in terms of billions of people over the age of 65 is is a huge issue okay so that's uh what they talk about in the video and uh, again we're going to re reiterate reiterate that in um in um the reading okay problem you know the, the the real economics of older people is um we do not put money out into the general economy, okay? We don't uh, buy cool clothes as much. We don't go out to the groovy restaurants as much. So we're not stimulating the economy as much as you guys do. Um, and then at the same time, okay, we're, we're paying far less taxes, okay? And we're going to go over that tax structure, okay? Because if you're spending less money, that means there's less tax dollars as well. Because, you know, we gather taxes based on how much money people spend, whether it's sales tax um, um, uh, or uh, based on my spending in my retirement account, um, I will then, I have to pay income tax on those, okay? But if I'm spending less, then I'm putting out less income tax that's going both to the feds and to the state. So you can see how this kind of breaks down. And we're going to go over this over and over again. So I don't want you guys to 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 um, to, to worry about this. Okay. All righty. Um, so then they talk about uh, um, the, you know, the real issue confronting people that get older. Well, one is, um, you know, you've worked your entire life and, and there's a decline in both mental and physical health then after retirement oftentimes, and, and people need to have a purpose. And so there are a lot more people are working. People are some doing it for the psychological benefit. Some people have to do it because of the finances. Okay, we're gonna see about this. Uh, we, have, we have kind of a, 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 just a runaway train in terms of um, how little people have saved and in our country, you know, we're supposed to save for our own retirement. Social Security is far from adequate. Now, you're going to find out about that later. Um, so they, they go through all this. And then they, they, lastly, they go through a really good program of health sustainability. We, put, we spend more money than any other country for health care, and we get far less benefit in our country. And so this program was developed in, in the Netherlands called uh, Birdsorg, and it's about really neat um, residential home care delivery. So anyway, that's all in that video. So then what we do, okay, is we ask you guys to go ahead and click on this uh, PDF file right here. I'm gonna open it up. Okay, and, uh, and I want you to go ahead and read it, okay? And so I'm gonna quickly just kind of go through the overview of what this PDF file is all about. If you go back to the actual course, what we asked you to do is to look at the forward through trend five, for the first week and then what we'll do for week two is we're going to look through from trend six all the way through end note okay so that's that's in and this is where you know the, the quiz questions emerge from okay all right so i'm going to go back to uh, my friend the pdf file and we're going to go through that okay so um we begin with the forward okay and um and again it's it's you know it's looking at um the you know the societal aging the effect on and economic growth is a big big focus of this particular article okay and 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 all the spokes of the wheel that come in and 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 you know, have an impact on on national and global economy okay um, there's you know a big thing called the burden of disease okay um, hey, like I said we're, we're going to see exponentially how much um, cost goes up in terms of my out-of-pocket expenses for healthcare. All right, the older I get, all right, the more I have to spend. It is what it is. You know, I, over my last five years, I've had so many surgeries because I'm an athlete. Okay, and uh, and I'm a, but I'm an older athlete, and and when things uh, instead of bending, they break. Okay, um, so again, this was uh, um, this uh, uh, article was put together by um, the World Health Organization, the World Bank. And, the U U and our U.S. National Institute on Aging, which is a big agency. 
Um, there's a big focus, focus on non-communicable diseases or chronic diseases of aging. What is a communicable disease? Something that um, is infectious, that is communicating across the population, like COVID, that is a communicable disease, okay? Um, but the, the big drain uh, are the diseases that last 5, 10, 15, 20 years. Um, you look at cancer, you look at diabetes, you look at um, vascular diseases that cause heart disease and stroke, kidney disease, and then we get into Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's and all that. All right, so these are very, very costly in society. So that's a big, big focus, okay, of what's going on. Okay, so that's that's what the, the forward talks about and, um, and um, they paint the picture of what's going on, okay? So the aging world, okay, and this was, you know, right out of that first quiz question that I, that I mentioned. So I can go back here and uh, I'm gonna go back and look at my quiz and it says, there it is, 8% of the population, okay? So um, if we go back over here, um, we see that uh, one, in, one in every eight of the Earth's inhabitants, okay, um, are gonna be over the age of 65 uh, by 2030, okay? Um, and it's going up and up and up and up. In the video, they said 25%, okay? There's my other dog, so I have two of them. This is, this is Lucy, the, the female version of Desi. Okay, and there she goes, all right? Um, checking me out, what am I doing over here, okay? So we look at the challenges, okay? And, and again, this is a lot of overview, okay? Um, so th this is un un uh, unprecedented, okay? Uh, this is new territory for our country, for countries across the world, okay? This big increase in life, life expectancy, big increase in the oldest old that are more dependent, more frail, and, it, and like I said, a drain on the economy. They, they, the older people need um, a lot of health care and just a lot of care in terms of um, the, the activities of daily living, shopping and, um, and having their bills paid and having their, their house maintained, things like that. Okay. All right. So, um, like I said, the big burden are these non-communicable diseases of aging, cancer, diabetes, vascular disease, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, ALS, stuff like that. Okay. Um, we're going to see in certain populations, okay, where um, there has not been reproduction, uh, you see a bulge in the population, the older groups, but you don't see the replacement factor, all right? So the canary in the coal mine that we saw in the video, uh, that you'll see in the video, is, is Japan. But there are many, many, many countries that um, uh, are these developed countries that that um, are falling in line where there's not enough new people. There's the, the fertility rate is really low. And you combine that with a reduced likelihood of dying or reduced mort mortality. And then so there will be a lot more older people and a lot less younger people to care for the older population. Okay. Um, so that is a big change in family structure. Okay. Um, you know, what, you know, We'll talk about it in our country, um, the developmental period that we all go through has really, really extended. Now, I, uh, it used to be a unique thing that somebody went to college. A lot of people got right into the working population immediately right out of high school. Um, now it's, um, it's getting extended, okay? And so many people are getting their first real jobs, you know, in their late 20s and 30s. Um, and as a result, they have to kick the can down the road in terms of having children. And um, so what happens is for you, if you wait and have kids in your mid 30s, okay, then you get sandwiched between the, um, the uh, dependent which is your child who's totally dependent on you and now your older parent, okay? Before, back in the day, you would have kids when you're younger, your older parent could help you with the kids and everything is changing, okay? And also because there are fewer kids in every family, that means there's a greater burden on individuals to, to care for older, older members of the family, okay? So if you don't have family members to help you out, and that's, that's really the case in a lot, a lot of different families, a lot of communities, um, then you can have a change in uh, retirement and work patterns. And, um, and uh, so people are gonna have to work longer and there's a big push in our country and countries all around the world to, to change the quote unquote retirement age, okay? Um, that is, the, the, you know, for our country, um, you know, when you would get your maximum payout of social security, okay? And so Congress, 
the Senate. Everybody's trying to push that age further and further down the line, which is really difficult because it's really, believe me, super hard to be as competitive um, at 66 years of age and have the stamina at 66 years of age compared to you guys in your early 20s, okay? But it doesn't matter. That's the, this is the expectation that is coming down the pike, okay? Um, a lot, you know, I, luckily I have had um, a real good program of uh, retirement savings, okay? And we're gonna talk about that, IRAs and 401ks and 403bs, okay? And I got into it fairly early. And uh, but there are a lot of people, okay. Um, that you know, there are you know, at my age group, believe it or not, over 50% of the population has absolutely nothing saved and they're 100% uh, re reliant on social insurance, okay, social security, okay. Then, so uh, people live longer, okay, that means more money is being paid out. So this is the evolution that we're talking about. So it's a, it's a, it's a, you know, basically a domestic, a country-based economic burden that every country is beginning to, to grapple with. And there are countries, um, old, you know, old world countries, you know, European countries, where they had huge guaranteed pension systems, you know, not uh, a defined contribution, which is what I do. I put my own money. I define how much I'm tr tr contributing to my retirement plan. These other uh, countries. France and Spain and Belgium and Italy, they guaranteed a pension. Um, and it's, you know, it was from historic times when they were put together. And now the, you know, uh, the, an enormous, you know, 70% of their gross domestic product is going out to paying retirees. It's not sustainable. All right. So these are the big challenges. Okay. Big, big challenges. And countries are going to are changing rules and people are rioting. All right. Okay. But doesn't matter, you know. People are living longer. This is the, the this is this window of opportunity. Um, you got to be proactive and not reactive, and that's what this is all about. Okay. So yeah, if you wait, there's an enormous cost. All right. Um, so you have to have to have to figure things out. Now um, they're talking right here a lot about um, um, uh, health. All right, and in this particular uh, um, um, chapter. Um, there, there is a, you know, the, a real push towards healthy living, all right. So that way, I'll be less of a burden, okay. Um, uh, you know, I, I, I don't need to be going into the doctor and and into the hospital for continued vascular problems. I can, you know, maybe um, avert that by having a healthy diet and by exercising, okay. All right. Um, so. This particular uh, chapter goes into to these issues and it talks about some of the key elements. Right here, okay, again, being proactive, this is about um, putting away money, okay? So we see right here, they're, um, they're, they do a comparison of um, how much money you would have to put away um, so that, say, at age 70, um, you would have 700 grand um, as a retirement income. This is with a a really conservative return on the investment of 5%. For years, we were getting between 8 and 10%. Obviously, this last year is cratered, but that's just a blip, believe me. We're going to show you that when we do financial planning. It always comes back, okay? Um, so in order to do that, I would have to put you know 10 grand away at age 40 if, for 30 years to have that amount of money. It's compounded, okay? Um, it grows, and you can see that right here. If I started at age 30, I would put away, I'd be putting away half as much money, okay, uh, to get the same gain. Uh, so we're going to learn about how how uh, compounding interest works, okay. Um, the cost of waiting is enormous, okay, and so that's what the, the rest of this this little section is about right here, and 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 they get into Europe, and I told you Europe is um, is is in a, in a world of hurt right now, okay? And so they're having to make big, big, big policy changes, and um, and and there's there's lots of uh, political problems associated with that, okay? All right. So um, this is just looking at the numbers, okay? And you just again you can read through this. Uh, the table kind of says it all right here. Um, this is going out to 2050, and we can see these trends, okay? And then, this, you know, again, these are the groups are, that are dependent on you, okay, the working part of the population, okay? So from 18 to 65, you're, you know, contributing to the world, 
your gain, you you have income, okay, and then you have these other groups that are reliant on you, okay, in many ways, okay. So uh, we can look at age and uh, age uh, ages five years or younger, or we can look at ages 65 years and, or greater, and you can see the transition that has happened right here, okay, and this group is growing and growing and growing, and like I said, many of us are choosing to have either no children, one child, or maybe two if we're lucky. Okay. All right. So we have these two categories of countries. This is going to be in your first writing assignment that's coming down the pike, the critical thinking assignment. We look at developed countries versus developing countries. Okay. And this has, you know, these categorization is, is based on where they are in terms of economic growth. Okay. So we see these old school countries. So France. Okay. And what, you know, what is the metric we're looking at here? Let me get my photo out of the way. So we're looking at the number of years of uh, people that are 65 years or older, uh, how long it took to increase from 7% to 14% of the population. So this is just a, an ex, you know, and when you're a population, an analyst, a demographer, this is just a readout that you would have, okay? And then you look at that, that doubling of the percentage from 7 to 14%, and how long it took each of these countries to get there, all right? So you see, France is, a, is an old, like I said, this is an old world country. It took a long time for France to get to that point, okay? It took them 115 years. So hopefully they had um, their act together, okay? Then we can follow their lead. Eh, not so much, okay? We see Sweden, okay, 85, U.S. Um, it, it took 69 years, okay? And then we see down here that it happened really, really quickly in Japan, okay? And then we see down here in these developing countries that don't have the economic structure and stability that we have, it's happening at just, just breakneck speed, and um, they're not ready for it, okay? So it goes back to this concept of being prepared, okay? And, um, and you know, this has to do with the cost of waiting. So we, there's going to be a lot, a lot, a lot of, of uh, countries looking for places like the U.S. to, to you know, come up with solutions for these problems, okay? All righty. You know, why is this happening? Okay, so we have this big increase in life expectancy. I um, mean, that's from, you know, intervention, you know, medical intervention. This is from hygiene, so we got rid of a lot of the bacterial infections that used to kill people off, okay? You know, so uh, uh, typhoid and, and uh, dysentery and things like that, and uh, I'm Lucy here. This is Lucy. I'm going to show you here, Lucy. Lucy is a German Shepherd pointer, and she's awesome. We've had her for a month. She's about a year old. She's she's pretty mellow. Okay, very cool. All right, Desi and Lucy. That those are the names that they were given before we got them. Okay, okay. So life expectancy has increased, and we were getting up there. We were approaching 80, and then boom. Our life expectancy dropped by almost two years because of COVID. And, and why was that? Okay, This was a strange communicable disease. COVID was an infectious disease and in that it was targeting the oldest old, Okay, the vulnerable um, aspects of the oldest old. So people not only as they were older were more vulnerable, but people that had a lot of the chronic diseases of aging that we've talked about. So di diabetics and obesity and people with uh, fat, cardiovascular disease were the most vulnerable populations, and of course, those people suffering from cancer, okay? But in the, for the most part, we see this increase in life expectancy, okay? And it talks about, you know, what what's going on, okay, when, in, when we look at uh, the, this transition. we Like I said, we're going from high to low fertility, okay? So, you know, my parents' generation, okay, we're going to hear about the baby boomers, they would, you know, have... Um, you know, four or five kids. You know, my mom tried to have four or five kids. We had three, okay? Sometimes six or seven kids, okay? It was like a labor force that you would put out there into the farms. Well, guess what? The economics of our country change. You don't need that many kids. You don't, you, you moved from some rural community to downtown Cincinnati. And now um, life's a lot more difficult and you only have two kids, okay? So we've had this reduction in fertility and this steady increase in life expectancy, okay? We, we've been able to, to dramatically increase um, survival rates in cancer, cardiovascular disease. The next frontier is from Alzheimer's and Parkinson's, but we keep pushing um, um, the, you know, the lifespan further and further down the line, but then that creates its own set of problems, and that's what this is all about. So we can see here 
uh, you know, this dramatic change. This is what's called a survival ship curve. And we let's say we look at everybody who was uh, born in 2003 versus everybody that was born in 1901. We lined them up. We had 100 people in each of those age groups. And then we just uh, see how many survived, okay? And back in uh, 1901, okay, in our country, you know, you, by the age 10, almost 20% were dead. Why? Because we didn't know squat about hygiene. We didn't have vaccinations. Yes, vaccinations work. <laughs> and um, so with science, okay, in improvements in, in terms of healthcare delivery and just uh, the, uh, the environment that we live in, you see that um, people here in the red are living a lot, lot, long, lot, lot longer. And then you see this decline right here. And if we would be looking here at 2023, we would see this extending up further and further and further. And then you get this squaring off, this precipitous decline um, as you get increased vulnerability as you get older, okay? All righty, so that's what that's all about, okay? So we have this rising number of the oldest old. Then again, these are the most vulnerable. These are the people that require the most care. These are your, these are your, um, your grandparents, okay? Um, what are we going to do with this, okay? So that means more and more people, if people are living longer, um, are relying on pensions and re retirement income, okay? Uh, this, uh, again, there was really bad planning. We didn't see it coming in a lot of countries, and now you're having to deal with this, okay? Um, sorry, let me just go back up here. Damn. There I am, okay? And, um, and we have a, like an explosion of centenaries as we're to, that's raised in this particular chapter as well. Okay, so there we go. That's where I was at, okay? So healthcare costs are, are disabling, okay? Um, and they get higher and higher and higher, okay? We have changes in, again, the generational roles, okay? And the relationships that are going on. Um, you know, the more centenarians that, that we have, the more reliant society is, um, they are on society in terms of taking care of them. Okay, so we can look right here. By age group, on a percentile basis, um, we'll see the biggest jump is the oldest old because we, you know, again, it's amazing the stuff we've done for healthcare, but there's a consequence. You know, and, and, you know, obviously, um, I'm not, you know, running down to the beach surfing at age 100. I may have survived that long, but now I'm really, really dependent for social services or maybe my immediate family for services. And this is something that has to be, you know, accounted for. All right, so that we have this growing burden. All right, everybody's living longer. So then you have a growing burden of not the infectious communicable disease, but the chronic diseases of aging, the non-communicable disease of aging, okay? And we see heart disease, cancer, diabetes, okay? Um, and, the, and, um, um, and not diseases from infections, okay? Although <laughs> um, COVID was a shot over the bow. And because we're in a, a, a modern country, we've, we've figured out ways to, you know, to, to intervene for older people, but it costs so much money. Think about all the hospitalizations and what it costs our country this year, okay? All righty. So this is the transition, okay, that you can see. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it a little bit smaller here. There. And we're looking at... Um, uh, Low middle income countries, okay, this would be developing countries versus developed or high income countries, okay? And um, we're looking at, um, again, the burden. Um, so this would be part of the financial cost, the GDP, the gross domestic product of different types of hospitalization causes, for example, or healthcare services causes. So you see injuries here, okay? Non-communicable diseases of aging, okay, cancer, all right, diabetes, heart disease, okay, kidney disease, Alzheimer's, etc., or communicable diseases of aging, um, maternal diseases. So these are pregnancy issues, okay, perinatal. These are um, you know that really vulnerable period after you're born, okay. Um, nutrition is a big deal in these developing low-income countries, okay. So we're going to see the projection from 2002 to 2030, okay? So you see right here, we're already there, that most of the healthcare costs is going towards these 
non-communicable diseases of age, and that affect people over the age of 65 disproportionately, okay? Then we see over here that there is the transition happening from these low-income countries where people will live longer, okay? And they're going to have more and more costs that is going to be uh, devoted to these um, diseases of aging, okay? All righty. We also are seeing populations declines, okay? So let's make sure we're looking at this right here. All right, sorry. So we're going through trend five, all right? So we're almost done, guys. Let's go back to my PDF file here, and we're going right in here. I'm going to make it a little bigger, okay? There it is. Awesome, okay? So um, we're going to see population declines in certain communities, especially in these more developed, okay, old world countries okay other parts of the world are going to continue to rage okay um you know, we know that china has the high, highest population about 1.4 billion india is going to pass blow by them in about um 10 years and then guess who, who blows by them by about 2060 2070 nigeria blows by everybody okay all righty so um what countries are going to be seeing the biggest population declines okay um and we see that russia is number one right here Japan, Ukraine. What is the common theme right here? It's because of low fertility. Okay. Plus, in Russia, who wants to live in Russia? People are just, you know, are, are you don't have the immigration. Okay. You have people skedaddling, exiting uh, these countries. Okay. But you know, one cure, as we saw from the video, is increasing immigration. Okay. So um, this would be, you know, taking on foreign nationals. And they would increase the birth rate and also increase the population of workers that would be of younger age. But the bottom line here is the lower fertility rate is what's doing this, okay? All right, so we can see right here the population change, okay? That's projected in Russia. We saw Russia was most impacted in this global analysis, okay? So they're going to see the biggest decline in population from 2006 to 2030. And then we can hone down the analysis Again, this is called demography, looking at across the entire population in Russia. And uh, we see right here um, which age groups are experiencing the biggest decline. Okay, so these are negative numbers. So you see, and then which age groups are going to see the biggest number. So while population is on, you know, look at when you crunch it all together, population is declining. We saw that by almost 20% in Russia. But the older people are actually going to go up in numbers and less younger people to take care of them. So it's it's a it's a huge, huge problem that, that Russia is gonna see. And you know, other countries are seeing that as well. Japan is seeing that right now. And um, and then, you know, uh, and who's gonna take care of them? Is it family members? It's hard to say, guys. All right, so I'm gonna end right there, okay? This is the drill, we'll do this every week. And um, we are, we are in this transition stage right now. Uh, for those of you who got in earlier, the, there were a couple of corrupt files and I just discovered that today. So I went in and fixed those files and, um, and we're gonna be uh, surveying the entire uh, weekly assignments to make sure that we don't have that problem again. It ha had to do with, I'm gonna show you right now what the problem was, okay? There's a new movement, okay? So I'm gonna exit my preview. Okay, this is my instructor view. So I'm gonna go into the weekly assignments, okay? So you get you get a rating um, in terms of your files right here. All righty, I'm gonna scroll down right here. Um, and that is, uh, you know, how well the file um, is, com how, how compatible that file is um, uh, in terms of, Diverse populations being able to access it. So, um, so we're in the process of fixing that right now, and I apologize for that. Okay, all right. So that, my friends, is it. And in fact, I'm going to change this file right here. So when you or when you open it, you open this file right here. All right, guys. I'm going to say peace right now. Take care, and we'll see you next week.